you better stay hydrated. Many people don't take this into account, but naming probably is the most important topic in every brand or product that you are creating. It has a huge impact on your project if it's going to be a success or a failure. And you want to know if you are naming your projects correctly? Just keep watching. The name of the brand is probably the first contact that you are going to have with all the brands and projects and even things that are not projects are just an idea. It can be a product, a brand, a company or even a theory that you have. Let's suppose that you have a concept and you give it a name. When people start talking about this, the name is the only thing that's not going to be changed ever or at least it shouldn't be changing. And you have to keep it in your mind. When you are creating your brand, your business, your whatever, your product, the name is not just like a logo with something that, okay, it's not going well, I just change it. A name is extremely hard to change. Many professional designers, myself included, claim that a logo should be updated or redesigned every five years because the trends change and what's modern today is going to be outdated on five years or ten years maybe. So keep it in your mind that when you create a logo, it's not definitive. Brands evolve and things change. But the one thing that's going to be amazingly hard to deal with changes are names because when you change a name many people are going to still treating you and your brand and your product for the last name i have an example for you there's a mall on a city that i lived before that has a name it was called vivachi it has the same name for the first like five or six years maybe of the mall and then the company sold the mall for another company and they changed the name of the mall and even now five years after the purchase most of the people of that city still treating the mall from its first name from the last name, from the name from the past. And it happens just because it's very hard to change the name of things. Because when people put in their heads that the name is one, they are always going to remember that name. Because sound is something that's very easy to get stuck in the head. This is why every time that you hear baby shark, doo -doo 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 -doo, that song doesn't go away from your head for the next week and I'm sorry for this <laughs> and when I was at design school the one thing that the teachers told about naming is choose it carefully because you are not being able to change it this on the future because if you change this on the future it's going to be very hard for you to change it and to people to memorize the new name and forget about the last name it put us on a very hard situation every time that we have to pick a name for something that we create because a little mistake on this step of the process can lead to a complete failure of your project. Many times your name can be misleading and the people that hears it think it is one thing but in the end it's another completely different thing and you should be aware that names shouldn't be descriptive names should be made to identify you don't want to describe your entire company just on the name you have good examples like apple windows canon you, canon doesn't sell cannons or weapons or anything related to this they sell cameras and calculators and printers and stuff like this so don't think that your name should be the doors company if you are manufacturing doors for example so don't think about being descriptive only think that you should give a name that's easy to remind and and easy to identify yourself inside of your niche or identify yourself for your clients so make sure that the name that you choose for your projects they are not misleading and i have a very good example for you of a misleading name when we are talking about consoles and video gaming the updates from one version to another is always very clear at least in most of the cases for example every generation of playstation you just have the most simple way to show that this is an evolution from the past one playstation 1 playstation 2 playstation 3 playstation 4 playstation 5 PSP, PlayStation Portable, PlayStation Vita? I guess I, now I know why they failed with the Vita. And then you have the Xbox, and you have the Xbox 360. Where did all the other 359 consoles go? I don't know. What's even more strange is that after the 360, they made the Xbox One. 
why Microsoft and what happened in the U, 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 U. And what's wrong with the Wii U naming, you may ask me? Well, apparently, you have different names for each one of the generations of Nintendo consoles. You had the NES, the Nintendo GameCube, the 64, you had the Nintendo Wii, you have the DS, the Game Boy. So all the names are very different. The problem here with the Nintendo Wii thing that happened that made one of the biggest failures in the history of the console selling in the world, at least in the modern competition between Nintendo, Xbox and PlayStation, it was that Nintendo launched a new console called Wii U. Everyone thought that the U on the end of the Wii was a new controller with a screen for the Nintendo. Many people didn't see the Nintendo Wii U as a new console and there was no enough marketing in this world that could make people see the Nintendo Wii U as a new console instead of a new gadget to use along your old Wii. And this is one of the main reasons that the Wii U failed as a console, because it has amazing games. The people that bought the Nintendo Wii U were very satisfied with the console. It was not a bad console, but the only and biggest mistake that costed them millions of dollars. Yeah, millions, because a full generation of their console, of the investment, went down the toilet. It was like millions and millions and millions of dollars that Nintendo lost because of this wrong move, just with the naming. So they made everything right everywhere else, in the development of the console, in the development of the games, in, in the fan service, in everything, but the naming. And now I hope you can see the importance of a good name for your projects. Don't do the amazing process of naming, of covering your eyes and pointing down to the, all the names that you wrote on a paper and choose it randomly, because it's not going to work well. Bad naming, such a simple thing that can destroy your projects. And there is also another example that I want to give to you that is a, a word in Portuguese from the movement that is the feminism movement. In Portuguese, the word feminism is very similar to the word in English. The way we say it is feminismo, but there is another concept that's completely different that seems like the opposite of feminismo or feminism that is sexist, that puts male in advantage when compared to woman. We call them machistas. That sounds the exact opposite of feminism or feminist. But this word that's the equivalent to sexist in Portuguese were widely known much earlier than this strong feminist movement that's going on right now. So most of the people in Brazil that are more than 200 million people don't understand the movement. And it's not because they want men to be more than women. It's just because they think that this movement is just women trying to make men inferior and they kind of think that the woman is trying to dominate the world. And this bad naming move that they made when they chose the name of feminista for feminism or feminist, only this single decision is making the life of this cause much harder and many people just don't understand the cause because of it, just because of the naming. And if you don't want to have a much harder life with your projects, with your causes, with your companies and products and so on, make sure you give a good name for it. There are also another case that I want to talk about is a company that I can't say the name, but is a brand that sells products. And in one part of the world, the name that they picked for their brand is the equivalent to drug addict or drunk or someone that's addicted to something bad. And they didn't care about it. And they put the name everywhere in their products. They bought the domain, the website has this name and it's very complicated in this situation because you may think, okay, but if this brand never sells in that country where the meaning of this word is drug addict, there's no problem, right? Wrong, because now on the beginning of the project, when you type the name of the brand on Google, what's going to appear on Google images is the images of drugs, of drug addicts laid on the floor on overdose, many people drunk, sleeping on streets. You're going to see policemen arresting people and you are going to see like things that clearly has something to do with drugs, police problems, legal problems. One of the first things that you probably do whenever you want to work with a brand is to type the name of the brand on Google. And what would you do when you type the name of the brand that you want to start working with on Google and everything that you see is police problems, it's legal problems, it's drug addiction and drug related topics. So it's up to you if you are going to work with a 
brand that just show things about drugs on the internet, even though they have nothing to do with drugs or legal problems, because they are just a standard brand. But you get the point, so make sure that the name that you are picking for all your projects doesn't mean something wrong in other languages because it can be problematic for you because now one day if they grow a lot they may be able to to overcome the situation and make sure that google only shows things related to the brand instead of people being arrested but in the beginning it's going to be very hard for them to deal with this situation because every time that someone types the name of their brand on the internet bad images are going to show up and no one wants to be attached to drug dealers to drunk people and to people being arrested no one wants it so you get where i'm going with it right and now i'm going to try to help you with the solution for these problems whenever you have a name that you want to use in a project of yours first thing that you should do always is okay i have a list on paper of the good names that i can use you are going to copy all these names to google and pinterest and you are going to see the images that this name is attached to always try to search for international meanings for this word and it's very important to know that if that name is close to something that can be misleading for your audience make sure that you drop the name and you choose another one even if you like it less than the name that you picked before because with names you should always play safe so again if it's close to mislead drop it play safe also try to search on social media instagram facebook and youtube if you don't see anything wrong in Google, in Pinterest, in YouTube, in Instagram, you are good to go. Another tip that I have for you is try to avoid big names. Big names are very hard to remember and people are lazy. They don't want to have trouble trying to remember the name of a brand. Another tip that I have for you is try to type all the names that you want to use on your projects in websites that sells domains for your websites because you can have an amazing name for your brand or for your product but if you have a hard url you are going to face a problem too so make sure that you search for good urls before you actually picking the name another quick tip that i have for you if you are working alone or if you are working for yourself with a brand that's focused on you just use your own name because when people see your face it's going to get much more easy to remember from the name if they attach the name to a face and if you use your own name for your personal brand instead of creating a name that's hard to pronounce or hard to get the domain or if you have to search the name in other countries use your own name but don't forget to search for the meaning in other countries either way because your personal name can be something that's not bad on your language but it can be bad for other languages and an example for you the name Rui in Portuguese it's a very common name but in Russian and Ukrainian it's a very bad word so if you are a Rui anywhere in Portugal or Brazil don't make a personal brand that's going to be worldwide with your own name okay <laughs> it's just a tip for you if you want more content on design and content creation branding and so on don't forget to drop a like to subscribe and to ring the bell to more videos and I also heard that if you don't subscribe to this channel after watching this video the logo it's going to be 50% bigger than it should be to make sure that your logos don't magically scale up and mess up your designs don't forget to subscribe also if you are just starting on graphic design if you want to create content for instagram or also if you want to create your personal brand don't forget to check my courses on skillshare the links are all in the description this is it for this video thank you for being here with me and don't use comic sense see you in the next video